Uh, I want to start by saying Brakathe Yahawa, Brakathe Yahawah Shai, Brakathe Yahawa, Brakathe Yahawah Shai. Call Halal Yahawah by Hashem Yahawah Shai. Call Halal Yahawah by Hashem Yahawah Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles at Great Millstone that told me this doctrine and truth and sincerity. Shalom to the elect. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahawah, which means he is or he exists. By Hashem in the name of his only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. We know his name to be Yahweh Shai, which means he is the deliverer. He is the savior for the Hebrew Israelites from the pedigree of your father. By Hashem in the name of the Rokha Kodash, which means the Holy Spirit. They able to give us the understanding of who we are, which are the true Hebrew Israelites. You so-called Negroes, so-called Latinos, so-called Native Americans, or of the speckled bird looking like the other nations in your spirit. Bear witness with this doctrine. You could be one of the elect. Shalom. We've been discontinued from our heritage because we went off following after false gods and false idols, not following the law of such a commandments that was given to us by our forefathers. And because of that, uh, you know, that lack of uh, trusting in Yahweh Hashem Shai, we were sent into captivity, right? And we we're still in captivity. But in the latter days, through Yahweh Shai HaMashiach being that perfect lamb, which is our savior, that he would wake up. Of the elect, because again we were spiritually dead from the from the neck up. We didn't know who we were. We were following after heathen customs, right? We were lost in this world. We were those lost sheep. But Yahweh Shai would wake up, you know, his uh, his elect, and they will not be deceived by Esau Edom, which Esau means wasted away is, and they are the biblical Edomites. Right, they are the self-proclaimed white man, the elite, the banksters of this world that would have the fatness of the earth and control it with the great sword. These are the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Oppenheimers, the Duponts. These are the wicked that it speaks about. That again would have control with that great sword, and it comes in many different variations. One of it is their military bases, where they're able to control. Um, you know, over 80 countries and have over a thousand bases in all these different countries where they're able to manipulate and bring forth their uh, propaganda through their democracy, creating a tyranny and the people um, be divided against each other. You know, the families, you'll have the woman above the man and the children will be man on man, woman on woman, transformers, they'll be bugged out. Okay, because again, Esau, Edom, is the wicked okay everything he does is profane and outside the temple okay and also through his other sword which is his media right his media goes back to witchcraft and sorcery and enchantments that he puts on the people by fear-mongering them to comply to his uh, mandates because ultimately his ultimate goal is to have everyone karagma up right which is through a, a graven image in your forehead or in your hand. It's something that's physical inserted inside of you to be able to have you be a perpetual slave, an everlasting slave. And if you don't comply, it's a get down or lay down mentality. And how they're going to bring it in is by buying and selling. Okay? You're not going to be able to go to the store like you want. So that's how they're going to be able to implement it. That's why you have a shy, which is our comforter, <clears throat> we have to trust in him because that's the only refuge and shelter that we can have. Okay. And this time, but only elect are going to get it. The rest are going to be blinded. Okay. And again, Esau Edom has a strong military force, you know, and that's what this lesson is going to be about is, um, you know, that we, uh, we got to take heed of what Esau Edom is planning to do, which is he's planning to come in like a madman sparing none. He's planning to come in with um, all his uh, military forces and all his technology against the men of the Lord. He shall be wroth with the with the with the woman, which is speaking about uh, Israel and starting with the elect. OK, and he has a thing called the 1033 program. And that's what this lesson is going to be about or centered around is how. Babylon the Great, which is a uh, which is um, America, Babylon goes back to Babel, which goes back to uh, confusion. Okay, and this is modern day Babylon. Why? Because of all the abominations and all the deities and all the 
idol worship that it has to this day. Okay. All these, uh, these beast systems are all in this place. The, all the abominations, all the, all the gods, you know, going into the months, going into their, their legislation, going into how they build their architecture. All this is, uh, Esau Edom is not done away with. Not yet. Not till our Lord comes back. And then after a thousand years of hardcore slavery, he will be uh, put to stubble, referring to uh, Obadiah. Right? But first it starts with this word being preached around the four corners of the earth, and then the end shall come. Okay? But Esau Edom's going to come in like a flood. Okay? Because again, he has um, put through his legislation um, these military forces in a domestic areas. Why? Because it's a war on, on the people. And those that don't comply, that's why he wants to get rid of the Bible. And that's why he wants to get rid of the Constitution, bringing in the National Emergency Act, that which they already have right now, showing you that we're at the end. So I'm going to play a little bit of this video. And then I'll bring out some edification. Or want to be edifying. All right. Let's lock you. so that we can provide the protection to the public that we are sworn to do. We're not at war with the public, but we do need to protect ourselves so that we can provide the protection to the public that we are sworn to do. Since the 1990s, local law enforcement units in the U.S. have received billions of dollars worth of military-grade equipment from the federal government. This has led to heavy artillery and armored vehicles rolling down U.S. streets, leaving some Americans feeling unsettled. Now, President Joe Biden reportedly wants to put restrictions on how police forces are equipped. So when did U.S. police start receiving military equipment? Under the 1033 program, surplus items like weapons and vehicles are transferred from the Department of Defense to local law agencies, both large and small. These deals stem from George H.W. Bush's presidency, equipping officers to fight the war on drugs. The program was later expanded during the Clinton administration to include counterterrorism efforts. The legislation protects not only our national security, but also our security at home. Over time, local police forces have stocked up on everything, from armored vehicles to grenade launchers. Americans saw some of the same equipment used by U.S. soldiers during the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, and they would soon see it on the streets of their own cities. What's, uh, what's going on over here? Here we go. When protests broke out in Ferguson, Missouri in 2014, the country and the rest of the world watched as the local police department took to the streets with military vehicles. This led to President Obama imposing restrictions on the program. We've seen how militarized gear can sometimes give people a feeling like there's an occupying force as opposed to a force that's part of the community that's protecting them and serving them. But those restrictions were eventually loosened by the Trump administration. We will do our best to get you what you need. We have your back. We black the blue. But does military equipment have any effect on policing? Some studies have suggested that the 1033 program might not be reducing crime at all, and that this militarization is harming the public's perception of policing. This program is incredibly problematic. What we've seen in response is, you know, the militarization of our communities in response to First Amendment protected activities of, of residents, and particularly in communities of color. Law enforcement agencies that have acquired this equipment and, and weapons of war have been using it against their own citizens. But law enforcement officials have maintained the equipment is vital in dealing with the increased threats officers have been facing in U.S. US streets and typically that's what happens when we show up with this vehicle it's uh, it's overwhelming force and we have the element of surprise and typically it's nothing happens they surrender and we take them to jail 
when something happens, we're responding. But the fact of the matter is, we're responding and it's happening. So you've got to be able to protect yourself. All right. So they're showing you their, their military force. And this is uh, Esau Edom. Okay, because again, he's been given that power to be able to uh, to be able to do this. So I'm gonna start right here. This to show you uh, where we're actually at, you know, as far as uh, you know what America is built on, right? So this is Daniel. He's speaking about the the four beasts and one that would come out. So, and this is speaking about America, which goes back to Amar and the Hebrew, which goes back to a uh, bitter. And we're in a bitter, confused state again when our own government is waging war on the people. Let me get to, actually, let me start from right here. This is Ecclesiastics 3 and 1. Because again, people, you know, they're out there, you know, hanging out. They think that the endemic happened and everything's all right. When they shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction shall happen. Again, people don't even know that um, your government is waging war on you, right? Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, to everything there is a season and a time and every pers person, socket, like every purpose under heaven, okay? Ecclesiastes 3 and 8, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. So again, um, through their legislation, they're waging war on you. That's why they have the military, um, the military forces in the domestic places, okay, here in Babylon the Great, right? And that great uh, sword, they've been taken what? To be able to take from the earth. Revelation 6 and 4. And there went out another horse, right? And that horse symbolizes uh, their power. Okay, as I'm going to get get into in uh, Daniel, I'm going to break it down a little bit, right? And that, and that was red. So a red symbolizes uh, Esau, Edom. Okay, Edom goes back to... Uh, uh, being red okay that red man going back to uh, Cain killing his brother Abel and Cain had the mark of what leprosy translucent skin okay that's how you know who he is the true red man okay which are the elites the banksters right that are trying to bring in their new world order through order out of kale order out of chaos they create the problem and then they come in like they're going to be able to to help they're going to come in with their military force as you see right there Revelation 6 and 4, and there went out another horse, symbolizes power, that was red, uh, the Edomites, right? And power is given unto him that sat therein to take peace from the earth. Again, which is this uh, America today is Rome 2.0, and it's the same thing Rome did. They took peace from the earth. They took over all the provinces, okay? They took over all the places. They had a, a very strong, they called it the teeth, which is the military force, which is the same thing you see today. Okay, showing you that the Ecclesiastics uh, 1 and 9, there's nothing new that is under the sun, right? Sat therein to take peace from the earth, and that should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. So again, a great sword to do what? To slaughter the people, okay? And it comes in with their military force, but also with their GMO foods, okay? With their philosophy, okay? They come in with, um, you know, their, their aluminum barium, their chemtrails. Okay, there's there there are um, diseases that they spread forth. Okay, there's a lot of different variations of the sword. So going back to Daniel's Daniel uh, seven and seven, when he's speaking, he had the vision of uh, of of Babylon the Great. <clears throat> it says Daniel seven and seven that I saw in the night vision and behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong, exceedingly he had a great iron teeth. So again, speaking about Rome. Okay, he had devoured and break the pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it and was diverse from all the beasts that were before it and had 10 horns. So, yeah, going back to their um, political system, that's how they were uh, diverse. Okay. Their Caesars and things like that. Okay. And also, um, you know, so they're showing you that these are the um, they're different than the others. Okay. And this is speaking about Rome. So going into it, this is uh, Daniel 7 and 8. And I considered the horns and before, for a few, sock you. I considered the horns and behold, there came among them another little horn. So again, that's speaking about America, that little horn. Okay, because the, the um, 
the 10 horns that I had before was the, the kings and the nobles, okay, the 13 colonies, all right? So it says uh, Daniel 7 and 8, and I considered the horns, behold, there came among them another little horn, right? Before whom that were three of, of the first horns plucked out by the roots. So again, that's speaking about uh, uh, France, Spain, and Great Britain, okay, the British, right? The first horns plucked by the roots, and behold, in his horn, yeah, so in the, in a horn symbolizes power, right? Were eyes like the eyes of man, and the mouth speaking great things. So again, that goes into his uh, speak. You know, his uh, uh, actual physical man, right? Speaking about Esau, Edom, speaking about what his um, his science, his philosophy, you know, his Roman Catholicism, okay, his, his uh, um, um, Christianity, okay, his uh, military force, far as he had the. Um, they have what the military, uh, socket, they had the, the nuclear bombs and that all goes into uh, the image of the beast. So again, this is Rome 2.0. Okay. Has a, America has the same, uh, military force that they bring forth. Okay. Going more into it. This is revelation showing you Esau Edom is not done away with. <clears throat> this is Revelation 21. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit. So again, the bottomless pit is speaking about Europe. Why? Because uh, it's not able to grow uh, certain resources. That's why they have to fly in, um, you know, trees and, and fruits and things like that, because it, the um, the land is, is um, <laughs> destroyed. OK, basically. Right. So they don't have resources. Right. So the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. So that great chain. Um, is uh, slavery. Why? Because this devil um, was bound a thousand years. He was put to a low estate where he wasn't able to deceive the nations. Okay. And after that thousand year period, after Rome got put down in about the mid 1300s through um, the Renaissance era, which is the rebirth of Rome all over again, they were able to, um, you know, do a thing called the conoclasm, which was cover the faces of the judges. OK, putting for which the judges at that time were actually, um, you know, brown face images. And what did they do? They put forth their images, their their, um, you know, their image of of uh, of the savior, which is a white image, a, a white hippie going back to uh, Serapis Christi. OK, going back to Caesar Borgia. Right. Uh, Jesus Christ. So all these things are the same image of what Esau Edom. Covering the uh, crucifying our Lord, which is a so-called black man. It's evident that he's at the tribe of Judah, which is the so-called black man, a brown skinned man. OK, putting their image in there. That's part of the Renaissance era when after they were uh, loosened. I'm going to get it right here. Revelation 20 and two. And he laid hold on the dragon, the old serpent. So again, going into that dragon, that's uh, Rome. OK, which is the devil and Satan. So again, um, you know, going back to Esau, Edom being the, the devil, the deceiver, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. So again, he was bound for a thousand years. Rome was, was knocked down, okay? And after that thousand years, this is what happened. It says, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. It says, yeah, so he wasn't able to deceive the nations far as with their philosophies and, and all these things are back again, okay? You have the gymnasium, you know, you have the gladiators, you have the... The bread and circus, you have all these things, the legislation, the, the architecture, all the things are back again. It says, till that thousand years shall be fulfilled, and after he must be loosened a season. So again, that's the time we're in right now. We're in that uh, that that little season that that little horn is able to have power and what to, to deceive the nations. And right now that... that um, that dragon that you, that is speaking, I'm going to get it right here, is speaking through his legislation, through pushing forth that that uh, that image of the beast, okay? Because they're trying to bring in the karagma, which is a graven image in your forehead or in your hand, and have people worship the beast, which is what? Their philosophy, okay? Their philosophies of what they put down, of, uh, you know, taking the Beetlejuice or taking the karagma, um you know, their, their, their white images. Okay. All the legislation that they pass, you know, the, um, 
transformers, you know, men on men, woman on woman. Okay. And if you're not complying to, to their mandates that they want, then it's a get down or lay down mentality. Right. So revelation 13 and 11, <clears throat> revelation 13 and 11 and behold, another beast coming out of the earth and he and, and uh, that beast is symbolizing what uh, another kingdom coming out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb so again those two horns the horn symbolizes power and the two horns go back to uh the plebeian and the patrician in rome okay and nowadays they have what the democrat and the republican which gives you that false hope that you can be able to vote for legislation when really they're of the same eagle going back to rome again they had the eagle and now they have the eagle showing you that this is who uh, Esau is. He exalts himself as he is the eagle. I think that's Obadiah, right? Showing you that uh, Esau Edom is not done away with. It says he had two horns like a lamb and he spoke as a dragon. So again, through his draconian measures, through um, Isaiah 10 and 1, his unrighteous decrees, he's able to pass this legislation bringing in abominations. 13... Uh, Revelation 13 and 12, he exercises all the power. He exercises all the power of the first beast. Who is that? Rome. Okay. Before him, he causes the earth in that which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So again, going back to that uh, deadly wound being healed after that thousand year period when he was in that um, bottomless pit with that chain, which was, symbolizes the lowest state of uh, slavery. Okay, his deadly wound was healed again in about the mid 1300s, the Renaissance era, the rebirth of what Rome 2.0, where he was, a, where he he's loosened for that little season, that little horn, which is Babylon the Great. Okay, where they're able to push forth all their abominations throughout the four corners of the earth, right? And again, he's what taking peace from the earth. Revelation six and four, and that goes back to. Uh, um, you know, that goes back to Cain, but first I want to get this right here. This is Habakkuk. And why does he do this? Because again, his soul is not Habakkuk two and four. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up is not upright in him. And that's speaking about Esau, Edom, the one that's been given power has been given that great sword. It says, but the just shall live by faith. So again, who are the just, the, the elect? They're going to live by faith in what? Yahrashah HaMashiach is our Lord and Savior, that all these prophecies are faithful and true, according to, um, right, in Revelation. Because his soul is not lifted up, is not upright in him. He wants to push death, right, as it speaks about in 5, Habakkuk 2 and 5. Yeah, also because he transcribed by wine, he is a proud man. Again, going back to um, his um, philosophies, and he's a proud man. Why? Because he hasn't been put down. He's able to conquer all these different nations. Okay, he hasn't been, um, you know, punished for his iniquity. That's not until our Lord Yahweh Shai comes back and puts them in fetters, irons, and chains. And after the hardcore slavery for a thousand years, then they're put to stubble. Okay. He is a proud man, neither keep it that home. He enlarges his desire as hell. So again, hell is a condition. He's pushing forth hell, hell is conditions. He'll, um, he'll give you GMO foods, which... Right, which 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 is not good for your body. Okay, he'll put a uh, barium aluminum in the air, then he'll um put fluoride in your toothpaste, fluoride in your water, he'll he'll poison your your woman to think that she should walk around with her ass hanging out, okay, and put you at a low estate and 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 exalt the woman, which is off. It's not against. It's not. Uh, that's not how it is supposed to be as far as the scriptures. Okay, you have Yahavashah, you have Yahweh. Then his head is Yahrashai, or Yahrashai's head is Yahweh. Okay, our head is Yahrashai, and the woman's head is is the man. Okay, but that that's not the order that happens here in Babylon the Great. Because again, he is a proud man who enlarges desire as hell and as death. So again, Esau Edom is known as death. That that uh, vessel created for wrath and destruction. It says, and cannot be satisfied, but gather into him all nations, heap unto him all people. So again, he heaps into them all people. So bringing in his new world order with his NATO and his EU. Okay, the, all these nations bringing them together on one accord to bring in their uh, one world government, one, one world cashless society, one world military, bringing in the uh, Great Reset. 
So again, this goes back to um, Cain. And I'm gonna go, I have an article actually speaking about the 1033 uh, program, but I want to bring this out because this goes back to um, showing you that uh, you know Esau is the same spirit as Cain. Genesis four <coughs> four and eleven. Genesis 4 and 11, and now are thy cursed from thy earth. He had opened her mouth to receive that brother's blood. So again, you know, when you go into the story, uh, Cain killed his brother Abel, okay? And Abel would be a symbolism of uh, Jacob, okay? And Cain would be the symbolism of uh, Esau, right? Genesis 4 and 12, when thou tillest thy ground and shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength, a fugitive and a vagabond, thou shalt be in the earth. So again, this is uh, Esau Edom's punishment. Again, a vagabond goes into a person that uh, goes to and to and throw. Okay, he doesn't have no place of repentance, as referring to he Hebrews uh, twelve and sixteen, and a fugitive, you know, from the killing of his brother uh, Abel. Okay, and that's why Esau Edom constantly slanders that brother because he doesn't want to be found out who he actually is, and only the servants of Yahweh Hashem are actually going to know who this devil is. They're going to have the understanding. Genesis 4 and 13. And Cain said unto Yahweh, my punishment is greater than I can bear. So again, Cain was being a, a sucker because he didn't want to accept, uh, you know, far as his punishment for the killing of his brother Abel. So this is the point I want to get is the, <clears throat> the word Cain. And going to the definition. Strong's H seven thousand fourteen. Cayen. Cayen. Okay, so it says possession, right? And so when you go down to here, actually, when you go into the uh, root word, yeah. So this right here, this is the Hebrews seventy thirteen. Strong's H, 7,013, Kayan, Kayan. Okay, so it's Kwayan, right, in the Hebrew, and that goes into the um, spear, showing you that uh, even back then, Cain was known as what? The weapon, okay? And what was what was Esau given? Let's get, we're going to get into it, Genesis uh, 27. It says, uh, let me get this first, 14, Genesis uh, 4 and 14. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from the face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. So again, why? Because he had that mark of leprosy. Okay, that's why he couldn't bear his, um, you know, his, his, his punishment. Because again, everyone knew who he was. Okay, now, but he's hidden, hidden so much. You know, when you're a fugitive, you start to uh, put on these different images, put on these different, um, you know, these heritages, right? These different masks. I want to get this word um, fugitive. Because that's what Esau Edom is. He's a fugitive. Yeah, to shake, reel, stagger, wander, move, sift, make move. So again, that's what a fugitive does. They're always constantly running. They're constantly looking over their back. And if, if they do get caught, they always start pointing the finger at others. Okay, to totter. Yeah, uh, yeah, to cause and to wander. And what do we read in Habakkuk 2 and 5? That he is a, a proud man. He, he um, enlarges his place as hell. So that's why he's constantly always in everybody's business. Right. And this is the same spirit as Genesis. And the reason why I'm bringing this out, because this is showing you the evolution of uh, Esau as far as, um, you know, his weaponry. Right. Genesis 27 and 39 and Isaac, his father and Isaac is Yahweh, if he could receive it. His father answered and said unto him, behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. And the dew of heaven from above. So again, the fatness of the earth, when you go into the word fatness, it goes into the oils, the best, um, 
and the oils, which is which is the best resources. Again, the the dew of the heaven is, um, you know, their their resources that they will have. They will have the best of the food, the best of, um, you know, even even today. Look at they got the yachts, they got their own islands, they got everything that they need, but they still want to bring forth death. Okay. Genesis twenty seven and forty, and by thy sword thou shalt live, thou shalt live, and thou shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion. So again, you know, that sword, okay, they served uh, King David. Okay, they, they served King David and then they were loosened for that. Um, you know, they were out until um, about, you know, they were able to, you know, do a little bit until about the, and then again in the 1300s, right? They were again loosened for the, the Renaissance era. It says, the sword thou shalt live and serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion. So when you go into this word dominion, <clears throat> so, you know, they did serve thy brother. They served uh, King David. Okay, then they were able to, um, you know, start getting loose for a little bit, right? And then they came into power again in the 1300s and now for the time right now. It says, uh... Yeah, so uh, Hebrews 7300, this word. Strong's H, 7300. Rude. Rude. To wander restlessly. Roam. To roam, to be restless, to show restlessness. So again, that's exactly what it uh, said over there in, uh, for um, the, a vagabond, a vagabond fugitive. Okay, exactly said the same thing, that it shall wander, disturb, things like that. Showing you that, again, this is the same spirit again with Esau. Same spirit of Cain, okay? He shall have dominion, and that's what he's doing. He's wandering around these different countries, putting forth that great sword. And now he's doing it over here, over here in Babylon, the great, which is his cash cow, cash cow, right? Genesis 27 and 41, and Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father at hand, then I will slay my brother Jacob. So again, this is what this whole, this whole story is all about is the protagonist, which is Jacob, which his name was later turned to Israel, had 12 sons. Okay. Then you have on the left-hand side, the antagonist, which is Esau Edom. And he's the bad guy, okay? And he's bringing forth what that great sword because that's his ultimate enemy, okay? Now, the other people, those are his enemies too, but his number one enemy is taking out the men of the Lord. Why? Because of that birthright, right? And he is what? He is known as the modern-day Assyrian, which is the rod of thy anger, <clears throat> this is Isaiah 10 and 5. Oh, Assyrians. So Assyrians were known as a great military force. Okay, which is the same thing you see again, showing you that Esau Edom is not done away with. The rod of my anger and the staff of thy hand is my indignation. So again, that is the club of, of, uh, of our Lord, Yahweh Shemar Ashai, to punish us for our iniquity again, for falling after false gods and false idols. Right? And also, um, Babylon the Great is known as what? That great hammer. Showing you that that's the same uh, Rome 2.0 again. That's why it says. In uh, Psalms 140. And 1. Psalms 140 and 1. Deliver me, O Yahweh, from the evil man. Preserve me from that violent man. So again, going from Cain to Esau, and then the self-proclaimed white man that you see today, which are the Edomites, which is which is that violent man that has all the power, has the fatness of the earth, has control. Okay, protect me from that violent man. This is King David speaking. Two, which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Yeah, so in their mind, continually they are gathered together for war. So continually they're gathered together to plot evil schemes in these think tanks, these Bilderberg meetings, these United Nations General Assemblies, 
Why? Because they want to cut off that hidden ones, which are the Hebrew Israelites. Okay, which is their ultimate enemy. Right? Which is, and then Esau Edom is our enemy. Right? He's the wicked. Okay. Psalms 140 and 3, they have sharpened their tongues like a serpent adder's poison under their lips, Salah. So again, whenever they speak through their legislation, their unrighteous decrees, they are like snake venom. Why? Because all these laws are meant to um, put Jake, you know, for instance, you know, the, the, the crack epidemic. Because that's when this, this 1033 program came out, is in the 1990s when crack was, was around, which... They're the ones that put the crack in the in the neighborhoods. And that goes back to the real Rick Ross. Okay. Um, the real Rick Ross that actually was um, working with the CIA, which now, now is a, is a um, you know, they put it in, in um, mainstream media. They have a show about it. Okay. And then he came out with a documentary showing you that they were working with the CIA. Okay. And the CIA was putting drugs in these communities. OK, ultimately to to uh, destroy Jake. Right. But they didn't count on the spiritual awakening. OK, started with Abba Vivens in about the 1970s. Then it was a great awakening. Then you see the apostles and the elders that you see today. Starting, in, uh, you know, 2007, where they where they came on the, um, the Internet. YouTube, where they're able to or again, another great awakening. And then to the men that you see right now that are speaking the same things, calling on the name of Yahweh and Yaharashai, which are with Yahweh, which is the heavenly father, and Yaharashai, which is his son. Psalms 140 and five and four. Keep me, O Yahweh, from the hands of the wicked. So again, who is the wicked? Esau Edom. Again, who who has power? Uh Esau Edom. They are have a great power. They have their portion right now. They've been given the fatness of the earth. And we're in the latter days right now, right? Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of that fall. How do we know it's at the end? The wars and the rumors of wars. Them coming down with their uh, 1033 program and implementing their military force, taking peace from the earth. Keep me, O Yahweh, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who have proposed to overthrow my goings. Yeah, overthrow your ways, plotting against you. Okay, again, I speak about the um, the foods, the strong drink, the Roman uh, having these false leaders like Malcolm X, uh, Martin, Luther, Martin Lucifer King, all these devils led our people astray. You know, the hip hop industry today, Tupac, Biggie, all those were leading you with Snoop Dogg. All these people have led you astray to thinking that you have to sell out in this industry and you have to be a drug dealer, a pimp, or a gang member. That's not you. That's Esau. Okay. Psalms 140 and 5. The proud have hit a snare. Who is the proud? Esau Edom. He is the proud. He is a proud man. He enlarges his place as hell. Hell is a condition. And that's what we live under. Hell. Okay. Hit a snare for me in cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set gins for me. So again, they have stretched forth uh, uh, traps and snares. Okay, which is ultimately going to lead people to these uh, re-educational camps and has led to a lot of our people to prison with this military force. <clears throat> and again, there's many different traps in Babylon. That's why it's known as the Valley of Shadow of Death. All right, and then Job even spoke about it, the land of darkness, which is confusion. All right. That's why we're going to have to... Um, you know, pray to Yahweh Shema Shai that that standard is lifted up. Because again, we're in a time, we're heading to the time of what? Jacob's trouble. When they're going to come in uh, like a flood. So I could, it's about to type in Jacob, Jeremiah. Thirty and seven. <clears throat> Jeremiah 30 and 7 at last for that day is great so that none is like it and even the time of Jacob's trouble but it shall be saved saved out of it you shall be saved out of it so again that's the elect that are going to be saved out of it that standard is going to be lifted up okay and I'm going to go into that a little bit I just want to bring this out because this is when they're going to start implementing that military force 
Okay, right now they do it for, you know, the bust down, you know, you know, dope houses and things like that. But they're going to start implementing this uh, martial law according to prophecy, right? And these are all the things that are going to happen in Jacob's trouble. Let me get it real quick. This is uh, Ecclesiastics and the Apographer say, uh, what is that, 40? Yeah, Sirach 40 and 9. Because these are the things that are going to happen in Jacob's trouble. Sirach 40 and 9. Death and bloodshed, strife, sword, calamities, famine, tribulation, scourge. The scourge goes into whipping, right? The uh, punishment. Why? Because you didn't hearken to Yahweh Bashim Rashai. 10. These things are created for the wicked, and for the sakes came the flood. So again, who's that flood? Esau, Edom. Okay, and that goes, and the wicked goes for two thirds of our people too. Why? Because they have surpassed the wicked. Okay, they're they're going to be thrust through with the, with this devil. Okay, they're going to get caught up in all the calamities, the famine, the tribulation, and it says, "Through much tribulation, we shall enter into the kingdom." Okay, this thing's not going to be easy. That's why it also says, "Endure hardness like a good soldier of a Mashiach." So we got to be soldiers, and uh, and soldiers, you're not gonna um, you're gonna be persecuted. Okay, you might get a bump or a bruise. Okay, things are going to happen, but the Lord is going to be able to protect you. He's going to be able to raise up that standard. Right? So I want to get a little bit of this article real quick. Actually, let me, uh, I got some pictures. <clears throat> oh, yeah, so that's that word, uh, Edom, going back to red. Idumian, descendants of Esau. Yeah, that's all Esau looked. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, his um, he has 750 military bases in 80 countries and colonies, costing Americans taxpayers 55 billion dollars a year. So again, you know, I think this was a couple of years ago. So they and then of course they have you know secret bases that they don't even put on there, but showing you that they enlarge their place as hell. Okay, their military force showing you that's his Rome 2.0 because those teeth were strong, right? And this is all the places that they're in. You know, as far as the different countries, 173,000 troops deployed in 100, 159 uh, countries. Oh, yeah. So it's 80 countries around the world, but they have people deployed in 159 countries. OK, Canada, Spain, Cuba, Germany, Italy, Kuwait, South Korea, Japan, Australia. So they're all over with that great sword. OK, same thing they have here. So this is going into their 1033 program. OK, they have mine disposable armed cars, non-lethal uh, capsule set. So when some of these were deployed when Ferguson happened, as they were showing, that was about a year old video. But they had in Ferguson, uh, Missouri, where they, where they had the military force. OK, they got helicopters, right? They got uh, Humvees. They got thermal site. OK. All these things were just regular old Jake. So Jake that's coming with that stick to camp and things like that, you're going to come up against this? They even, they put a dustpan, a popcorn machine. <laughs> but yeah, so guns, rifles. So these are all military weapons. There's a sharpening their sword. And again, showing you that this is Esau, right? Uh, Kwayan, that, that, that spear, okay? America has been at war for 222 out of 239 years since 1776. And again, May 1st, 1776, what? They started to implement their new world order, started uh, conquering more of their land. Okay, bringing in, bringing in to the point that they're at right now. And again, this was about, I think that's, this uh, page was actually like three, four years ago. So again, they're still in war, right? But they're saying they're not, but they are. They're, they're giving military weapons over there to Ukraine. And they already been over there. This is a picture. This is all the place. These are all the uh, times that they were fighting in war. Going back to 1945, they were fighting in China, Syria, Korea, okay, Iran. You know, and the list goes on. Iraq, Iran, present, Libya. So, you know, that's just showing you all the places that they're, that they're over in, okay? And this is one of their puppets that they're able to um, bring forth their, their legislation, 
right? They're swords. It says in 1997, Soros almost destroyed economics in Thailand. Malaysia was part of the full court press that dismantled Yugoslavia, caused the Georgia, Ukraine. So again, this guy is one of the guys that goes over to these places and and tells the people it's either a get down or lay down mentality. Okay, he's one of their puppets. It says, in case you didn't know, this is George Soros. He is the main source of cash for leftists seeking to destroy America, such as Occupy Black Lives Matter. So again, showing you that he's funding these Black Lives Matter, these, um, you know, in these uh, communist groups, Hillary Clinton and more. So they are supplying what? The controlled opposition. That's going to go against Jake. That's why it's important not to say that you are black because you're not black. You're actually... You're actually a Hebrew Israelite. That's what that's a byword that they call you, a nickname that's not your real name. Okay? And you shall know him by his countenance. Look at that dude. And he's the one that's in rulership. Um Yeah, so the he's responsible for the Arab Spring, Ukrainian Revolution, anti Trump protests, refuge invasion Europe. So I just brought him brought him up because it says, I'm going to bring down the United States by funding black hate groups. We'll put them in mental trap and then blame white people. The black community is the easiest to manipulate. So this is this guy's speaking about it in an interview. He is a proud man. OK. It says China must lead the new world order, creating its own, owning it and supplementing the United States as the world. So they, they all have these uh, plans to implement certain things, their legislation. He buys out all the um you know, all these, um, these, uh, political puppets. Okay. And I just brought that out because again, that's another one of their swords is they have the resources, the, their fatness of the earth to be able to control the people. So I want to bring out this article. This is charting $1.7 billion transfer of military equipment. Okay, these questions and more answer data, data for Defense Logistics Agency, which oversees 1033 program. A visualization above tracks the flow of military equipment to law enforcement over the past decade. Okay, so, so over the last decade, they've been uh, implementing this. I think it was in the 1990s. And this article is, yeah, two years old. So June 26, 2020. Okay. And that shows a chart of what they've been doing. And I showed you a picture of, um, you know, all the military weapons that they have. Yeah, it says the equipment is loaned to agencies who are only responsible only for shipping subsequent operating costs. Law enforcement agencies gain access to a vast array of military surplus from office supplies and thermal underwear up to armored vehicles and multi-million dollar communication systems also include the mix our medical supplies and geared to aid and search and rescue operations since the program's inception over 7.4 billion worth of property has been transferred so again that's the picture that i showed you earlier these are the things that they have to be able to come against jake okay ultimately and to come against the world right domestically and also you know these are all military Domestically, they're brought over. Um, the military weapons are brought over to um, be on domestic people, right? The ones that don't take the karagma. It says one of the most popular items acquired by police departments and mine resistant ambush protected vehicle. Okay. It says goggles, scopes. Okay. It says shipments of state level. Since the army is willing to part with excess equipment, cash trap police departments are happy to oblige. More than $1.7 billion of surplus transferred. The two biggest uh, spenders, California and Texas, okay, combined to acquire a total of $271 million in equipment. But looking at things per capita, okay, so these are all the states that got the most. Texas, California, Tennessee, Florida, Arizona, Alabama, South Carolina, Ohio, Georgia, Michigan. Tennessee had by far the highest spending considering its population with police departments and state inquiring 20 worth. It says $20 state acquiring $20 worth of equipment with the exception of Arizona. 
It says, who got the goods? Um, $17 million per unit. California's Highway Patrol received the most expensive single item on the list. $22 million in aircraft. So this, this is all the money that they, you know, these certain places, Houston, Las Vegas, Washington. All right. So, again, showing you that who Esau Edom is. That's why we're going to have to have a, a standard lifting up. And again, this is him uh, sharpening his weapon. <clears throat> Slocky. And just to show you again who's in control, this is uh, Esau Edom. This is, um, let me get Job 9 and 24. Job 9 and 24, 24. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof, and not aware who is he. So again, who's covered the faces of the judges? Esau, Edom. Self-proclaimed white man. You don't see uh, the Moabites doing that. You don't see Elam doing that, these other heathen nations. You see Esau, Edom showing you that who he is. Okay. This is uh, Proverbs 29 and 2. Proverbs 29 and 2, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the people, it says, but when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Again, and the people are mourning. Why? Because they're losing their jobs. Why? Because they trusted in Esau with that with that thing that came out a couple years ago. Why? Because Esau, Edom is speaking more draconian with, through his legislation. Okay? Going down to 16. Proverbs 29 and 16, when the wicked are multiplied, the transgressions increase, but the righteous shall see the fall. So again, when the wicked are in authority, sin flourishes. And that's what you're seeing right now on display. That's why you have transformers teaching your kid about sex ed. That's why you have the military forces uh, coming down domestically in these in Babylon the Great. Okay. And his sword is being furbished. Right? He's sharpening his sword. He's he's having um over there in South Carolina, what they had the, the games where they were practicing um, how they can be able to come into the cities, right? <clears throat> Ezekiel 21 and 9, son of man, prophesy, I say the said, and who will we prophesy against? Mount Seir. Mount Seir is um, Esau, Edom, anywhere that he sets his tent. Son of man, prophesy, say the said, Yahweh say a sword, a sword is sharpened and also furbished. So again, a sword is being polished and uh, and sharpened. How? By them training, by them getting these military forces, okay, getting the training to be able to come down on the people, Ezekiel 21 and 10. It is sharpened to make a sword slaughter. It is furbished that it may glitter. Should we then make mercy? So should we be in a mercy spirit, right? A party spirit? You know, everything's all good. No, we should be in mourning and lamentating and praying that our Lord, Yahweh Shem Shai, has mercy on our soul. Because we know that what's about to happen, the draconian measures, the bloodshed, the strife, Esau, Edom coming like a flood. It says, it content the rod of my son as every tree. I want to uh, get this in the NLT. I want to read this both in the NLT. Ezekiel 21 and 9. Son of man, give this people the message from the Lord, Yahweh Shai. Who is this people? The Hebrew Israelites. A sword, a sword is being sharpened and polished. It is sharpened for a terrible slaughter and polished to flash like lightning. Now will we laugh? Those far stronger than you have fallen beneath its power. 11. Yes, the sword is now being sharpened and polished is being prepared for the executioner. So again, it's being prepared for um, for the people. And who's the executioner? Uh, the rod of, uh, rod of his anger. Okay. Esau Edom. He's executing the people. Um you know, by the, the Karagma, by his lethal force, his military force, his 1033 program. 12, son of man, cry out and wail, pound your thighs in anguish for the sword will slaughter my people and their leaders. Everyone will die. So again, that's why you're supposed to be passionate about this word when you're preaching this word, because again, it says, uh, cry in house, son of man, for it shall be upon my people. It shall upon the princes of Israel, terrors and reason by the sword shall be upon my people. Smite therefore upon thy thigh. So you know, um, Ezekiel is getting down far as he's preaching this word. He's telling people um, about what's about to happen. That's why it says, cry aloud and spare none. Cry aloud for all the abominations that are done in this um, evil, wicked place. Right? 
That's why we're going to need what a standard lifted up. This is Isaiah. Isaiah 59 and 19. Yeah, I'll start from 19. Isaiah 59 and 19. So shall the fear of the name of the Lord Yahweh from the West. Okay, are we in the Western Hemisphere? And his glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy shall come in like a flood. The spirit of Yahweh shall lift up thy standard against him. So against who? Esau, Edom. He's the one that's coming in like a flood. Why with this military force? Why? Because he wants to... Um, um, because he's become cardinal. Because again, people are not going to listen, especially the men of the Lord. So I just want to get this word uh, standard. We're praying that Yahweh Shemar Shai lifts up that standard. Right? This is the Hebrews 51 27. It says, To flee, escape, to flee, to escape, to take flight, to depart, to disappear. So again, <clears throat> going into those spiritual powers that Yahweh Shemar Shai is going to give the men of the Lord to be able to. Um, you know, go in a place. That's why it says, uh, be as pilgrims, right? I think that's in uh, 2nd Ezra 16, where it speaks about be as pilgrims on the earth. Why? Because, you know, you're not going to know um, what's going to happen, right? This is 2nd uh, Ezra 16 and 40. Oh, my people, hear my word. Make ready to the battle, and those evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth. Yeah, because, again, we're going to have to move, because, again, Esau, Edom's going to come in like a flood. And we're praying that Yahweh Hashem HaShai lifts up that standard to be able to escape, to be able to disappear. Because, again, that sword is being uh, sharpened, right? So I want to get... Oh, yeah, let me get this. This is 2nd Ezra 16. Hey, let me read that 40 again. 2nd Ezra 16 and 40. Oh, my people, hear my word, make ready to the battle, and those be even as the pilgrims upon the earth. So, again, the prophets are, are calling, calling, um, calling the uh the elect or calling the yeah calling the elect those fruits to come to the battle what the battle of Yahweh Shemir Hashai, the spiritual battle in it and then it's gonna be physical and he will lift up that standard for us. All right, second Ezra is sixteen and sixty two. Actually I'm gonna start uh let's see Yeah, I'll start from 67. Behold, Yahweh himself and his judge fear him. Leave off from your sins. Yeah, so leave off from this world of sin and forget your iniqui iniquities to meddle no more than forever. And you shall, so shall Yahweh lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. So again, all the troubles that are about to happen, Jacob's trouble. 68, for behold, the burning wrath of the great multitude is kindled over you and you shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle which offerings unto idols. So again, that goes into those uh, those FEMA camps. Okay, those re-educational camps. Um, it says, Revelation 2 and 10, some of you shall be put in uh, jail 10 days, which is uh, um, you know just a certain amount of time. Offer the idols. What is the idol? The karagma, their beast system. Okay, it says, And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and reproach and trodden underfoot. So again, those that comply to those idols and comply to Esau Edom's mandates are going to be what trodden down on their foot. They're going to be stomped out by what? These military forces. 70, for there shall be in every place in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear Yahweh Shai. So again, those uh, insurrection, what? You're going to be um, tried. You're going to be brought to the gates of the nobles. Okay? A men that fear the Yahweh Shema Shai. That's why we got to have that standard lifted up. That place of refuge, Psalms 91. It says 71, this is the point. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord, Yahweh Shai. So again, they're going to be like a madman, sparing none with those military forces, the 1033 program. Because again, we're under a National Emergency Act where they can be able to implement this at any time. 
72. For there shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. So again, that's why it says be ye as pilgrims, not to trust in your, your resources. Now, there's nothing wrong with getting some stuff for your house, you know, being wise, but don't not to trust in that. Okay. It says 73. There shall be none who, who are my chosen and they shall be tried as gold in the fire. They shall know, Sakya, they shall... It says, then shall they be known who are my chosen. And who is the chosen? The elect, the remnant. Okay? And they shall be tried as gold in the fire. So again, just like the three holy children were tried in the fire. And what Yaharashai was with them. He is with us always according to Matthew 28 and 20. And we know that in uh, Matthew 28 and 18, he's been given all power. So it's it's a righteous thing to what kiss thy son unless he be angry. Because you don't want to get caught up in the said perils. Right? 74. Hear, O my beloved, said the Lord Yahrashai, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. So again, he would deliver us out of um, out of these troubles, out of Jacob's trouble. 75, be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for Yahweh is our guide. So again, he's guiding us, um, that lamp in a, in a dry place, or that lamp in a dark place, Salakia. Let me get that. That's uh, Proverbs 4 and 18. <clears throat> Proverbs 4 and 18 But the path of the just is as a shining light Who's the just? The men of the Lord that are coming back to the Heavenly Father That are following the law, search, and commandments To the best of their ability Okay, but the path of the It says, but the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more to that perfect day. So that perfect day is when our Lord Yahweh Shai, um is coming back. And how is it shining more? Through the prophecies. Through the prophecies, what? Manifesting, being made clear. It gives us hope. Okay? And we see that we're at the end right now, according to prophecy, according to measuring that time diligently. So this is Psalms 27. I'm going to skip around a little bit. This is a two. Start from two. Psalms 27 and two. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat me in my flesh and they stumbled and fell. So again, when these military forces come in, it's as though they host and should encamp against me. My heart shall not fear. And the war should rise against me. And this I will be confident. So again, we're going to be confident in that day. Why? Because we're trusting in the Lord. We're not trusting in Esau, Edom, and his wicked devices. We're trusting in Yahweh Hashem, Shai, that he will um, save us from what? The said perils that are about to happen. Okay? So skipping down to... Five. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. So again, he shall hide me. What did it say in standard? He shall disappear. Okay. And that's what we got to pray. <laughs> that's what we got to believe in. Okay. Believing in him. Um, you know, without faith, it is impossible to believe him. Or it's like, uh, without faith, it is impossible to please him. So we have to believe that these things are going to be uh, um, done. Because again, this word is what? Faithful and true. So again, Psalms 91, again, I'm about to wrap it up. Just want to get a couple of these scriptures, you know. <clears throat> Psalms 91 and 1, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide, under the, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of Yahweh, He is my refuge and my fortress, my power, Yahweh, and Him I will trust. So again, your refuge is your shelter to be able to um, cover you um, when the time comes that you need help, you know. This is a nine. Actually, seven. Uh, yeah, seven. It says a thousand. It says a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. So again, we're going to see a lot of death if we're of the elect. Okay, there's going to be a lot of death, a lot of bloodshed. It says a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. So again, 
Sirach 25 and 7 is a righteous thing to, to what? Recompense your enemies. And then also, well, that's in um, Thessalonians, but um, 2 Thessalonians 1 and 6, uh, speak, and also in uh, you know, Sirach 25 and 7, to see the downfall of your enemies. It says, Only with thy eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made Yahweh, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. And why? 14. Because he has set his love upon me. So again, you have set your love upon Yahweh You trusted in him. You followed the law, said your commandments. You believe the report. Set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high, again, on that rock, that refuge, that shelter, because he had no my name. So again, going into the name, Yahweh and Yahweh Yahweh is the Heavenly Father and His Son, Yahweh Shai, which is the deliverer of the Savior, your salvation. 15. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. So again, he will honor you when the time of Jacob's trouble happens. Okay, he's doing it right now if you're hearing this word. Because these words are comforting. Psalms 91 and 16. With long life and satisfy him and show him my salvation. So again, his salvation immortality to be able to be saved out of the set perils that are about to happen to be lifted up in those chariots singing the song of moses right and you have to believe in the report so with that call halal yahweh by shim yahweh shai by shim or kakwadash shalom to the let kwam yashalom